Hey everybody, what's happening? Chris Fitzpatrick back here with you on Chris Fitzpatrick Speaks. Thank you so much for tuning in and spending a little bit of time with me today. We are going to tackle a very provocative topic, a big topic, and one that we couldn't possibly cover all of in just one short video, and that is the topic of mentorship. So buckle in because we're going to cover a lot of ground today. This is definitely not the first time I've brought up this topic uh, within any of my talks, and I'm very confident that this won't be the last you see of the mentorship topic here on Chris Fitzpatrick Speaks either. I do want to remind you real quick that if you enjoyed this video or if you find any of these videos helpful, please make sure that you subscribe, hit the bell, so that way you know when new videos come out, and by all means, if any of these videos and any of these topics are helpful to you or someone in your network, please share them. Because by getting this message out and sharing with as many people as we can, it's hopefully going to help people find new paths for themselves either in their career, in their personal development, in their leadership journey, or wherever it is that they're trying to go. So please make sure you subscribe and hit the bell. Also, uh, if you check me out on LinkedIn, you can subscribe to my bi-weekly newsletter, Chris Fitzpatrick Speaks. That's where I post a lot of these videos and the write-ups from them. So that way you can go back and use them as a reference point. So please subscribe on LinkedIn. And if you want to connect with me on Instagram, you can find me at Chris Fitzpatrick Speaks. And I'd love to see you check out some of the photos and videos that I post there as well. So again, mentorship is a huge topic. Uh, it is not restricted to the professional world. There is a whole other topic of personal mentorship, but for our purposes, we're just going to focus on the professional and the workplace ideas surrounding the topic of mentorship. And I do want to shout out a very good friend and colleague, Mr. Philip Wilkerson. Uh, Phil works over at George Mason University, and uh, he just does such outstanding work, and I'm proud to have him as a partner and as a colleague. Recently, Phil and I connected, and we decided we wanted to tackle this topic together. Uh, and recently, Phil did an outstanding LinkedIn Live on the topic of mentorship, the link for which I will put in the comment section here on YouTube as well as on LinkedIn. I highly recommend that you check that out for more great content on the topic of mentorship, especially if you find this content helpful. I'll be referencing some of Phil's talk as well during this talk. Uh, and I highly recommend also connecting with Phil on LinkedIn, on Twitter, on YouTube, or anywhere that you can find him. He's got such a great uh, positive nature about him, uh, and he's very uplifting and a fantastic mentor in his own right. So certainly a topic expert, uh, and I highly recommend you check him out. So now let's start by tackling the topic of what a mentor is. So when you ask the question, what is a mentor? What do they do? What, who are they? Uh, the fact is that mentors can take on several different roles and at different times. And there are a lot of factors that will affect what roles the mentors take. Now, these factors can be internal, such as the personalities and the experiences of the mentors and the mentees. And they can also be external, such as a particular situation that the mentee may be facing and may need some coaching on. Let's talk about some of the uh, characteristics of a mentor as well. Number one, mentors can be short-term, they can be medium-term, or they can be long-term. There's really no definition as to the time frame or the length of a mentor-mentee relationship. Some outstanding mentor-mentee relationships only last through one particular issue that the mentee is trying to get through or an obstacle they're trying to overcome, and then the relationship ends and the mentor and mentee go their separate ways or go back to what they were doing before the relationship was formed. In some cases, it may be a company-based mentor-mentee relationship where uh, as long as a particular employee is at that company and the mentor is at that company, they have that bond, they have that relationship, and it is more of a, a function of being at that organization. I've had some terrific company mentors uh, in my history as well that were with me from very early on in my company career to uh, very late in my company career at the end of a career with a particular organization. Uh, shout out to Carol. Uh, one of the, uh, the, the really the strongest mentors I've ever had who helped set me on a path of uh, becoming a professional in areas such as uh, talent acquisition and diversity, equity, and inclusion. 
Uh, so in addition to guiding a mentee through a particular situation or being a company mentor, uh, in some cases, it may even be a lifelong relationship where that mentor and that mentee stick together in perpetuity for a long period of time and are part of each other's mutual support structure for uh, a longer term relationship. Number two, mentors can be younger or older. They can be more or less experienced. They can be from the same company or they could be from a different company. They might be on the same uh, career path or in the same discipline as you. They might do something completely different or they may hold a role or be an expert in an area that you have some interest in and you want them to mentor you in part so you can explore that particular topic and learn more about what it is that they do. Mentors and mentees can be of any race, any gender identity, any national origin, any creed, color, socioeconomic status, military service, personal history, etc. The roles of a mentor are constantly changing and evolving. Mentors can be coaches, they can be cheerleaders, they can be guides, they're often role models. They can be sounding boards, teachers, advisors, sponsors, advocates, and allies. These roles will often overlap and intersect but they will change based on the skills of the mentor and the needs of the mentee. Number three, a mentor is a source of trust. Once trust is undermined in a mentor-mentee relationship, the mentoring relationship is altered, damaged, and likely destroyed. A mentee should be able to trust their mentor to maintain confidentiality, respect, and dignity. Let's also talk about what a mentor isn't. Now, as Phil highlights in his LinkedIn Live, a mentor should not be doing the work for the mentee. That is number one in what a mentor should not be or should not do in most situations. Mentors are there to empower and guide their mentees to do what the mentee needs to do themselves, not to take over for them, not to stand in as a proxy for them, but to help guide them, coach them, empower them to find a solution or to handle challenges themselves. Number two, a mentor isn't out for their own interests. Mentors are in many ways servant leaders. And anybody who follows me, whether it's here or on LinkedIn or on Instagram, I'm a huge fan of the topic of servant leadership. Uh, I've been really following lately the work of Ken Blanchard, who is one of the authorities on the topic. And also, if you want to hear a tremendous podcast on leadership from somebody who also will talk about servant leadership and emotional intelligence, topics I'm very passionate about, check out Scott Allen. He is tremendous. Effective mentors will seek to boost their mentee and help them achieve their goals. So why is the asterisk on a mentor isn't out for their own interests? Well, that's because it doesn't mean that the mentor can't benefit from this relationship as well. Let me explain and let's cover a new topic, which is how mentorship benefits the mentor. Now, the mentor should not be going into the relationship with these items as their major goal. Again, the main goal should be helping the mentee. But the truth is there are many benefits to the mentor as well. The mentorship role is a great way for an up-and-coming leader to develop their leadership skills. A lot of times, certainly in my experience, somebody who sees themselves having a future in leadership or management might be a mentor first to fine tune that skill set and also to signal to the organization that they are ready to take that next step. Number two, mentorship is a great way for successful professionals to pay it forward. The concept of pay it forward is, I've been so successful in this particular area of my life or in my career path and I feel so, uh, so, so, so blessed, like so indebted to uh, however I was successful. So I want to make sure that people who come after me uh, have an opportunity at the same success or more success than I have enjoyed. It's a concept of pay it forward, which is very powerful for a lot of people. Uh, number three, mentorship is a great way for experienced professionals to pave the way for the future. When we work hard at something, when we succeed at something, there's also this sense of I want to see it continue and I want to know it's going to live on even after I'm done with a project or a topic or a career. Uh, so I want to make sure that the bench is strong. And in many cases, mentorship is a terrific way of strengthening that bench. Number four, when mentorship occurs between employees of the same company, there are additional 
benefits for the employees and for the company. And this is why I recommend to organizations to either have a formal mentorship program or to foster the type of culture and environment where mentorship can happen and thrive. Here are the benefits to an organization in terms of uh, what they can see when mentorship is part of their company culture. Increased employee retention, which leads to decreased cost. Greater career mobility, that's a big one. Opportunities for upskilling. If there's a transfer of knowledge and information, there's often also the opportunity for us to get better at the skills that make us so employable and successful to begin with. It also helps drive increased collaboration. More collaboration, that results in decreased siloism, which is this idea that we have to guard our particular task or what we're doing from anyone else in the organization, and it prevents departments, divisions, or even teammates from sharing information, which also is a major barrier to innovation. And finally, an opportunity to develop greater diversity, representation, and inclusivity. Having access to mentors is critical for individuals who are from historically marginalized communities. Let's talk a little bit about how to identify and connect with a mentor. This is a topic that Phil Wilkerson really covered a great deal in that LinkedIn Live, and I think he did a tremendous job of doing it. I think he did it brilliantly. So even if an individual has a full grasp of the value and the importance of mentorship, it's surprising to consider that if we were to pull every employee at a company and ask them in a moment of pure honesty, do you have a mentor? The number or the percentage of people who would say, yes, I have a mentor, is surprisingly small. Given the clear benefits of mentorship, you can ask yourself, why wouldn't any employee be anxious to seek out a mentor? Well, the truth is there's a lot of possible reasons, and they range from, I'm too busy. They're probably too busy. I don't want to be a burden. I need somebody higher up. I don't see any potential mentors who look like me. I don't know how to ask. I don't need help. What if I let them down? What if they let me down? And this is not an exhaustive list. There's a whole bunch of reasons why somebody may not seek out a mentor. This is just a few. But these are pretty heavyweight items. And these are feelings and emotions that people can have that might create barriers between them and that mentor who can help take their career or their skills to the next level. Remember, one of the first steps in finding a mentor is also one of the first steps in emotional intelligence. And the two are more linked than you might realize. That is self-awareness. Self-awareness is an important first step in identifying and securing mentors. And if you feel that any of the reasons I listed or any others are keeping you from making the necessary steps, then you should identify them before you can overcome them. As Phil says in his LinkedIn Live, look within before you look out when seeking a mentor. A couple points of guidance for finding, identifying, and connecting with a mentor. First of all, Look for a mentor you trust and with whom you feel you'll, you'll, you'll have a connection, who you feel will be able to listen to you, provide you guidance or perspective that's necessary to move yourself forward. Number two, if you need a mentor to help you overcome a particular challenge, seek someone or multiple people who possess the skill that you want to tap into or who have overcome a similar challenge. Don't get caught up in finding a mentor who's exactly like you or who has the exact same career trajectory as you. Being mentored by someone different than you is a great way to identify and overcome blind spots. Now, there's an asterisk there, too, because if you work at a company or an organization where people in upper management, leadership, and mentorship positions don't look like and don't represent the full community of employees that you have, then there's a really good opportunity to be self-aware about the organization itself. Because when you have leaders in mentorship roles that people can see themselves in, creates a greater degree of uh, security and inclusivity within your organization. So please be mindful of that. Next is you don't need to be an extrovert to ask someone to be your mentor. Many mentoring relationships are forged and built in one-on-one -on -one conversations and correspondence. You do have to be willing to put yourself out there. 
since waiting for someone to approach you and say, can I be your mentor, is highly unlikely. Writing an email, scheduling a call, sending a message on LinkedIn, even asking for a conversation one-on-one, -on -one, that's the first step in a potentially career-boosting relationship. Next, be prepared for rejection. And if that happens, do not take it personally. Some of the folks that you may want to mentor you truly just don't have the bandwidth to do it. If you see them as a potential mentor figure, there's a really good chance that other people do as well. Also, not everyone you see as a potential mentor really wants to be one. They may not be equipped with the mentoring skill set just yet, and that's okay. Next, connection should come with an understanding of trust and authenticity. Mentees, do not misrepresent yourself to a potential mentor, or anyone for that matter. That will not do you or the other party any favors. Trust will quickly be eroded and the entire foundation of that relationship will crumble. Next, if and when a mentor relationship has come to an end, let it go. Understanding that if the relationship was mutually positive, then there's probably an open door for the future. And even if you never interact with a one-time mentor again, looking back fondly on that time and experience with another human is nothing to scoff at. In the immortal words of Billy Joel, Life is a series of hellos and goodbyes. There remains so much more to cover on the topic of mentorship, so please throw questions in the comments section, connect with myself, connect with Phil Wilkerson, and please make sure that you subscribe to the YouTube channel and to the LinkedIn newsletter, because Phil and I are going to team up in the near future and deliver a tandem discussion on this topic. If you'd like to read a terrific article on mentorship, I highly recommend Harvard Business Review's What Mentors Wish Their Mentees Knew. It's a terrific read, and I highly recommend that you look that article up. Please continue to send questions my way, and your question may be featured on one of my future videos and my newsletter articles. Go out, mentor, be mentored, and above all else, thank you for spending some time with me. We'll talk to you soon. We'll see you next time. Have a great week.